when everyone comes together and agree that this particular thing, it's a thing of value, be careful. Why? Because when they all collectively see that thing as a thing of value, they are more likely going to abuse it. They see less of the humanity of the thing, but they see more of the price of the thing and what it's going to do for them. Unfortunately, this is not something that a lot of our mothers are going to tell us. The reason why I feel this is an important lesson for a young girl to learn early on in her life is that, you know, from earlier in our lives are where we pretty much form our beliefs, our habits and our philosophies. And you know, like the saying goes, a fool at 40 is a fool forever. So when you're still 20, this is the best time to understand what pretty privilege really means and what it really is. If you put a diamond in a local market, everyone would desire it, including the people who do not understand its value. And that is what I hope to achieve in this video, to tell a lot of girls who have this privilege, what it really means, the value of this privilege, and things that people of this world will not tell you about the pretty privilege. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel. And if you are new here, hi, I am Damsi, and you're most welcome to this crystal amazing community. So today's video is going to be about a topic that has been really dear to my heart and it's been ringing in my heart to really talk about because this is a topic that i have had to you know like go through and learn some very vital lessons from and this topic is actually a huge part of the huge awakening that i had that prompted me into you know working on myself and you know going on my healing journey and i think that this is a very important topic to talk about especially in this time and age i feel like a lot of young girls my age or the age that i was then when i started learning these things need to learn this and they need to understand it and it's not being talked about enough on the internet so yes today we're going to dive right into it without much rambling beauty is a currency yes 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 beauty is one of the oldest currencies and philosophies that have shaped this modern society and even till this day it is still a valid currency that people use as a means to an end so i say this with all confidence that yes pretty privilege does exist but trust me you are not that special this is my message to every pretty girl. The reality of pretty privilege is not what the world paints it to be. And I fear that if a lot of young girls are not being brought into the reality of it, or they're not being shown the reality of pretty privilege, a lot of them are just angels waiting to be devoured and damaged by the desperate hands of this corrupt modern world. If you've ever wished to be loved, appreciated and seen for more than just your looks this video is for you so i am someone who has lived in the blessing of the pretty privilege i have enjoyed you know the blessing that comes with this currency i mean i have enjoyed the unmerited favor from strangers above my peers and i have also enjoyed certain attention so i have lived through that life and i honestly cannot complain i just want to make you understand that you know i've also been there and at the same time i've also experienced like the not so pleasant side of the pretty privilege which is also the side of having to endure abuse from people that i held close to myself like i have also um, endured insults and a lot of um, heartbreaks here and there in the name of you know this privilege as well so just as i have experienced the good side of pretty privilege i have also experienced the bad side of pretty privilege and having experienced the good and the bad side of living with this esteemed privilege is what has actually encouraged me to put out this video because I have found something interesting about the bad side of pretty privilege when i got to the point where 
I had my spiritual awakening and I started my femininity journey. It actually brought me to a place of introspection and looking back at how my life was before now and like a lot of the things that were just not supposed to be if that makes any sense and i know that this is particularly one of those major um lessons that i just need to really talk about in the course of my introspections i took a very few important lessons lessons that i feel are very important because as I looked back, I also looked around and I've seen how a lot of girls like myself have gotten burnt and there's some who have gotten beyond saving just because they also wielded the same privilege. And as we grow older, I, I look back to the current younger generation now and I'm, I'm seeing a lot of them you know they they just it's just a different time for them and you know they still have that privilege but the way that they carry it is different from the way a lot of people in my generation carries it so my hope is that this video would speak to one of those people from the younger generation so that they can be aware of you know the power that this privilege holds and how they should wield it hopefully if they wish to you know learn and perhaps not how they should wield it but to understand the power of this privilege and also how destructive it can tend to be if not properly managed and properly carried i have picked up some few very important lessons that i'm going to run through in this video and I will try to be as brief as possible so that this video will not be too long. So one of the many things that you need to put in mind about being seen as a pretty girl in today's modern society is that when you're seen as a pretty girl, people do not see your humanity almost. You are more likely to be treated as a trophy, a means to an end rather than a person with fears, dreams, desires of her own, pain, and a soul. It's just something about whatever the society classifies as valuable. Because the modern society has fallen so far from grace. They have fallen so far from the reality that God really meant for his people, that God really meant for us. And when society paints something as valuable <laughs> okay so this is actually a bit deeper than it should and i don't know if i want to go very deep on this topic because it seems simple but it's just something about people in this modern society which i sometimes call the matrix okay so the matrix is kind of like an elusive um reality that is actually running our current world right now so People in this illusion of a reality, whenever something is painted as value or a currency, they tend to see that thing as an object. So what that means is they see less of the humanity of the thing, but they see more of the price of the thing and what it's going to do for them. So this kind of conditioning, it stems up from one of the darkest parts of us human beings, which is our desire to please and to pleasure ourselves that whole self-centeredness you know the current times we live in it is a time of individuality and everyone is just all self-focused and selfish and everything is all about self and self yeah um what can this do for me what do i get out of it if it's if i'm not benefiting anything from it i'm not going to waste my time with it so when everyone comes together and agree that this particular thing it's a thing of value be careful why because when they all collectively um see that thing as a thing of value they are more likely going to abuse it it's the same way that we've done with money you know, over the last decades so money has become something that has been somewhat um abused because people are just in a hurry to get it that they forget about the part where they have to earn it so people just want to get it so people are looking for the next black friday sales they're looking for how they can get more with less they're not ready to pay the price so this is why you need to be very careful 
if you are being labeled a walking currency and i'm very sorry to use that um that term or that phrase on you <laughs> we're all in it together so you need to be careful because what that means is people are not going to see your humanity that much so when they see you it is that beauty that comes out so i think this is one of the major reasons why women need to be aware of what it means to have this privilege that it is not as fancy on the surface as you think because when you are you know, the pretty girl okay you are just a walking trophy you know people are not going to break their backs for you they will get you cheaply if they can get you cheaply what that means is it's only very few that are going to want to earn you so another key fact about the pretty girl in today's modern society is you are tricked into the expectation that everyone will treat you like a person that they are proud to have so most ladies unfortunately destroy themselves with this privilege because of lack of knowledge and boundaries with navigating the market of potential suitors so that expectation that they are a walking bag of valuable currency often blinds them from the ugly truth that a pretty face lacking sound judgment is like a gold ring on a pig's snout and this is a reference from one of my favorite books in the bible one thing i've learned is that being pretty does not make a man worship you it does not make a man worship you trust me i once had this lovely relationship that i really really thought i was that special because this person really um treated me well this person he was kind to me and it was you know the relationship was just perfect like we had good chemistry and this person was extremely nice to me and he was caring and it was all that i could dream of in a man and you know at the time that the relationship ended and it actually ended over like a mutual understanding it was you know it, it wasn't one of those messy breakups we had come to a conclusion that it wasn't really going towards a realistic destination so we decided to part ways and when that happened um, one of the things that actually broke my heart later on this this was something that i actually found out later on after my breakup was i realized that this person moved on so quickly and is dating someone else in less than like two months within three months after we broke up and um i know that sounds kind of common these days but you know i am the one who was in the relationship and i understood how very serious and deep it was and it wasn't like a short relationship either it's actually the longest relationship i've ever been in and to see this person move on so quickly of course that wasn't the part that broke my heart the part that broke my heart was realizing that this person made me feel special and said all the special things about me made me believe that i was really that special in their eyes until i learned that you know his next relationship was basically within three months after we broke up it just made me think if i was really that special if i was really that valuable I'm not saying people shouldn't move on, but there are certain details that as a lady, this is a lady thing, we understand, okay? So no judgment here. You just know that when someone moves on like that, and especially with all of the details that I knew around that, it got me questioning, was I really as valuable as this person painted me to be? But when I healed, one major lesson that i learned from that was i wasn't as special as people paint me to be and that was what i meant in this title when i said yes pretty privilege exists but trust me you're not that special you're not as special as people paint you to be i am not as special as people paint me to be i am as special as i was created as i am created to be but guess what? It is only my creator that knows how special I am as a human being. And the person that I was with, unfortunately, did not know my creator intimately. So this person did not really know how valuable I was. And it was, you know, two ways anyway. And I may have believed that I was so special because of this person told me that I was special. But 
I wasn't as special as this person believed me to be. So what that means is when people project a value onto you and say that um, when I look at you, this is what I see, I urge you as a young lady to not pin your heart, your body and soul onto that pronunciation because you're far more than that. You're far more than what these people say. What these people see about you, sometimes there are people who see fragments, they see a piece, but never the whole. Never the whole. They cannot see the whole of you that fast. So when people tell you, because sometimes a lot of girls, especially those who have childhood traumas and daddy issues and did not feel a lot of love growing up, we tend to you know, base our lives, we, we tend to live our life based on how people define us. And that was pretty much the story of my life at the time. And, you know, everything that this person said about me, it really held a huge space in my heart at the time because I did not love myself. I wasn't aware also of the love that God had for me. So I based my mind, soul and my life on what this person said. So to come to a realization that this person had just moved on to the next person, like the past three plus years never existed, you know, so fast, it made me feel as though everything that this person say, was it true or was it a lie all along? And I just want you guys to understand that your value and who you truly are is not in people's hands. It is not people's jobs to tell you what your value is so take that out of your mind being pretty will not make people worship you you're not that special in their eyes so you need to build yourself up for yourself how my experience has shaped my understanding of pretty privilege if there are any words of caution that i would give to my younger self today one of those words will be to embrace the privilege like an accessory but to always remember that it is not one of a kind and it will not last forever. Yes. And just like an accessory, it is something that you put on but will be required to take off during bedtime or completely when you have grown too old to need it. So I, I do understand that, you know, the modern society has made it easy for us girls to you know, project that pretty side of us as the main part of us and as who we truly are. And we tend to look at ourselves from that perspective in such a way that everything that we become, everything that we do, even from what we buy, the kind of contents we consume online is kind of being driven by, oh, what looks pretty, what looks trendy, what looks flashy, what looks good on me. So it becomes kind of like our focus. So when you understand that, Pretty privilege is just an accessory and not a part of who you are. You would learn to not give that particular possession the amount of attention that you give it. It doesn't need that much attention because it is not that important. So I feel like it's something that a lot of ladies need to realize, especially early on, because it is in our early years that we form our habits and we form our beliefs. Our brains are still forming. And the reason why I feel this is an important lesson for a young girl to learn early on in her life is that, you know, from earlier in our lives are where we pretty much form our beliefs and our habits and our philosophies and all of that. And, you know, like the saying goes, a fool at 40 is a fool forever. So when you're still 20, this is the best time to understand what pretty privilege really means and what it really is. And unfortunately, this is not something that a lot of our mothers are going to tell us. Some mothers even go as far as encouraging the daughter to use a pretty privilege. Now, I am not saying that you cannot use the pretty privilege. We do have accessories. I have accessories. I have some accessories on me right now. And I use them for certain purposes, but I don't always have my accessories on. I don't always have these beautiful earrings on. I don't always wear my hair down. You know, there are moments or time in the day when I need to get these things out of myself just so maybe I can feel more comfortable or, you know, to allow my skin to breathe more. I don't 
always wear clothes <laughs> so pretty privilege is just an accessory that you put on and you take off so when something is an accessory like that does it mean you should no longer focus on the main body because the pretty image is not your main body it's not your true self it's really not and what the society does is to sell this idea that that pretty privilege is in fact all that we are and i do not blame girls for believing that because when you go on the internet and you go on all those blogs and articles and you go through the comment section and you see the mentality that a lot of young guys are being taught you know and we women we have this um, thing about us where we form our life beliefs based on how the men um you know perceive it or based on their own preference so we tend to live our life based on the preference of men you know all basically for the male gaze but i'm not here to get into the depth of that my point is you're going to see a lot of this sort of narrative on the internet i hope it won't be the case by your time or like at the time that you'll be consuming this content but at this current time where i live in this is a current narrative that you see online so whenever it comes to relationship talk and all of that this um men are always 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 stressing on women's appearance and how they look and their age and their beauty and all of that and it's made is driven a lot of women to focus on the outside appearance more than the inward um part of themselves so another word of advice that i would give to my younger self today about pre-privilege is that you need discernment and you need boundaries more than the average person if a diamond was placed in a local market everyone would desire it including the people who do not understand its value what did you do with it i'm talking to you yami where did that one the pink one I saw you take it. You are mad. I do not know you. Liar! Saw it with my own eyes. This me. Biggest I have ever seen. <laughs> hey! My brothers! I go give one thousand dollars to the man who cost the diamond out of this bastard! You need a case! You need a case! Where is the diamond? Girl, you need to listen. Okay? This is very important. If you put a diamond in a local market, everyone would desire it, including the people who do not understand its value. A diamond in a local market signifies putting something precious and expensive in a place that is easily accessible and a place that has no boundary. What happens in cases like that? I mean, economic students here that are watching this video, they, they understand. They understand the law of scarcity and they understand the law of supply and demand. So when you put something so valuable in a local place, you reduce its value. And what that means is a lot of people are going to rush at it. And in this stage in life, as a woman or as a lady, you need to have your discernment working for you you need to have your boundaries working for you and what does that mean in essence it means exercising your boundaries it starts with knowing who you are and your values and making sure that in everything that you do and in everything that you say your life is an expression of that belief so it's like saying stand for something don't just stand for anything you know have a stand have a brand, have an identity, let people know you by what you represent. And it all begins from knowing who you are. That is the strongest form of boundary that you can ever, ever develop in this life. And you need boundaries. You need boundaries if you are a diamond in a local market. And what that means in a real life situation is being the lady with the pretty privilege in this modern world, because this modern world is an is a good example of the local market okay a lot of people collectively and mass they're not in like their highest state the majority of people are not vibrating on a high frequency so you need to be able to separate yourself from those people so exercising your boundaries starts from knowing 
who you are and your values and making sure that your life is an expression of that belief. And that is how you exert your boundaries in a feminine way. So this particular point kind of reminds me of the story of Rapunzel in the animated movie Tangle. I think it came out around 2010 or thereabout. Anyone who has seen the movie and who understands the plot of the movie, you will definitely remember the witch from the movie and how she used Rapunzel because Rapunzel was a representation of a means to an end for her. You know, the thing that she desired the most, the thing that made her relevant, Rapunzel was like the epitome of that thing for her and you know R rapunzel was also like you know something that could potentially bless other people as well instead of her to feel very excited to share rapunzel with the world instead she decides she's just going to keep her to herself and that was exactly what she did she hid rapunzel away from her family away from her own world and hid her in a tower for years just to be using her okay that was what the witch did that was what the old lady did you know it might be an animated movie but i promise you that is how it is in real life situation when you give yourself to people who do not understand your value people who do not appreciate the real person one thing that really struck the light bulb for me in that movie was the fact that you know rapunzel aside the fact that she was an embodiment of this powerful tool for that old lady she was also a girl with dreams and desires and fears of her own and all she wanted was to live out that dreams all she wanted was to be happy to feel seen to feel alive and this woman deprived her of all of those things that she wanted just because the girl did not know her worth she did not understand her own power and she was naive and she wasn't exposed but this other woman understood at least to a certain degree what wielding that kind of power means for her and instead of exposing rapunzel instead of expressing you know love to rapunzel and teaching her how to manage her gift and her you know her, her blessing her privilege she decided to just keep rapunzel all to herself until rapunzel you know i i don't want to like narrate the story but the story was really so, like one of those animations that taught me a lot of lessons <laughs> um shout out to disney uh that was a lovely story and it was just well told and honestly in real life situation this is how it is and my dream and my hope is that a lot of young girls will also wake up and that is what I hope to achieve in this video is to tell a lot of girls who have this privilege, you know, what it really means, the value of this privilege and the things that people of this world will not tell you about the pretty privilege. If you are enjoying this video so far, be sure to give me a thumbs up and leave an emoji in the comment section so that I will know that you watched the video to this point and you're still enjoying it also subscribe to my channel if you aren't already the next important lesson that i will give to my younger self today is do not neglect self-care do not neglect self-care that is taking care of the real you the you that you get to live with after you have taken off your accessory the you that you get to carry from the beginning of your life at birth throughout your lifetime to the day of your death do not neglect to take care of that self so we're talking about the art of taking care of your real self your soul in this case why is self-care so important now let's go back to the story of rapunzel right so yes the old lady kept rapunzel stuck up in a tower for so long and hidden she wasn't particularly maltreating rapunzel but she was preventing her from everything that involved her doing things that would nourish her and make her happy we're going home rapunzel now you, you don't understand i've been on this incredible journey and i've seen and learned so much i even met someone Yes, the wanted thief. I'm so proud. Come on, Rapunzel. Mother of Weeds! I think... I think he likes me. Likes you? Please, Rapunzel, that's demented. But Mother, this I... This is why you never should have left. 
Dear, this whole romance that you've invented just proves you're too naive to be here. So she was kind of um, cutting her off from her own happiness. And what happened at the end of the day? She rebelled. Why would he like you? Come on now, really. Look at you. You think that he's impressed? Don't be a dummy. Come with mommy. Mother. No. No. Oh. I see how it is. She rebelled because, you know, every human being just have that thing in us subconsciously that just wants to, you know, live in our truth. And you cannot pretend for too long. You are going to start forming some form of resistance within your spirit. And, you know, this was actually what happened to me right before I got my spiritual awakening. Right. It was actually something that I also experienced in the real life situation. So I started to feel this um, kind of resistance within me that felt like it's created a hole inside of me, uh, a, a dark hole that each time I would feel like, OK, what I'm doing is making me happy. You know, when I give to people from the place of that privilege that I have, where they desire something from me and I just give and I give and I give. I got to a point in my life where I was just, well, at the time I could not describe it, but what it felt like, like was a hole that was definitely created by an internal resistance inside of me. And that hole, what it did, it just started sucking up my life. It started sucking up things that made me happy as a person and until I got to the point of no return where I basically felt depressed and what was going on it was that my true self my soul was yearning for expression it was calling for alignment it was time for accountability it was time for me to face the hard truth and that was part of what led me into getting that um unexpected instant spiritual awakening that i got in the year 2022 focus on promoting your inner beauty more than you promote your external invest in the part of you that no one can ever take away from you which is your inner beauty which is your inner self your true self there was this major lesson that i learned in my early dating journey which is how a guy treats you greatly depends on what side of yourself that you project the most and it's not just a guy i think it's a general thing i've learned that it's a general thing so people treat you based on who you show up as so are you showing up as a pretty girl or are you showing up as esther are you showing up as sandra are you showing up as vanessa are you showing up as choma are you showing up as um grace are you showing up as betty are you showing up as ava are you showing up as mercy Whatever your name is, are you showing up as yourself? Or are you showing up as the image that society has carved out and projected onto you? That's a very important question to ask yourself because it's important to know how you show up because people are treating you or reacting to that side of yourself that you're projecting. So do you want people, when they smile at you, do you want people to smile at your pretty self? or to smile at you? Do you want people to give you certain unmerited favors because of your pretty self or because of you? So do you want someone to love you because of your pretty face or you? So it's a very important question to ask yourself. Invest and nurture your inner beauty because that's the part of you that people will rarely recognize you for. That's the truth. But guess what? That's the part of you that you will be remembered for after you're dead and gone. Because people will not remember the pretty face because guess what? There are a lot of pretty faces everywhere. <laughs> yes, that's the thing about this um, privilege. It is not as scarce as you think, okay? It is everywhere. There are a lot of beauty procedures and a lot of things that people use in order to attain it these days. So it's no longer as priceless as it used to be before. You know, back in the day, in the days of the ancient Rome and the Greeks and all of that, 
true beauty really thrived you know there's not really much that people or women used in order to enhance their beauty and all they did back then was enhance not the way we do it now where people mask it up we all know these things right we all know these things so the truth of the matter is you're not the only pretty girl that is why you're not that special okay it is a currency that a lot of women have now so you are not that special for you to think in your head that you're special because you are you know <laughs> you're pretty is a delusion in itself i hope that i have been able to do justice to this topic in my own knowledge i just really hope that i have done my best in communicating the gravity of this subject and i really hope and pray that whoever is watching this today has learned something valuable from it and if you have please leave that in the comment section leave or drop a major lesson that you have learned from this video today in the comment section let other people read from you and also learn from you and you know let me know how this video has helped you along your journey with all of that being said thank you for watching this video up until this point and i will see you in my next video <laughs> yeah